stylistically, socially, and historically. The fashion house of Yves Saint Laurent has pushed boundaries and defined contemporary dress. Multiple creative directors have carried on the legacy through their vision. Today, our focus is a standout chapter in the house's history, the era under designer and photographer Eddie Simon's creative reigns from 2012 to 2016. This era was one by which life was breathed back into heritage through not only modernized imagery, but also the spirit and industry influence. Collections were artistically sound, possessing strong craftsmanship, and aesthetically consistent with developing codes, holding respect to house DNA, executed through looks of Parisian poise, and hand of an LA type of rock and roll edge that the house is now well known for. This was achieved with the design of the collections in addition to the overall image direction, marketing, and communications through an uncompromising vision that garnered in a meteoric widespread demographic desire. From avant-garde boundary-pushing ensembles to a repertoire of sleek and understated wardrobe pieces. In the words of Susie Menkes, international fashion editor at Vogue, the essence of the fashion house House is embodied, then pushed, and I quote, to the limits of decency and decadence, end quote. Eddie Salmon's career with the fashion house began in the early 1990s, where he took on an assistant role in fashion marketing and caught the attention of Pierre Berger, co-founder and business partner of the namesake designer, who would later instate him in the position of ready-to-wear director of menswear collections. For YSL, Autumn Winter 2000, titled Black Tie, the founder Eve attended this show and keenly applauded Simone's menswear. His vision was first unveiled to the masses in a time where menswear carried a very different tone to today. It was a significant turning point, as this very raw foundation-setting version of the legacy silhouette would go on to define menswear looks of the 21st century. Though these collections are lesser known. The experimentation of line and fabrication combated traditional language, which would be crafted and honed further during his time at Dior, going on to be present, which would later form the image of the Yves Saint Laurent woman and man. In April of 2002, the designer would be the first in menswear to ever receive the CFDA award for international designer, signifying the relevancy of his vision and not just the fashion house he was working working in, but the industry as a whole. Eddie Simon would return to Yves Saint Laurent as creative director, noted to have total creative responsibility for the brand image and all of its collections. His decision to drop Yves from the name and branding caught the attention of many, but was often met with disdain or judgment. It would be the first catalyst that would stir controversy before a collection even came out. Much of the media unaware of the house's history deemed this as a very foolish and disrespectful act. The new name, though, not only would represent the transformative years of the house ahead, but actually is a very intimate tribute and reference to when the founder launched the Ready to Wear line in 1966. The same sans serif font type and nomenclature was utilized and brought back to life. A YSL spokeswoman stated, Salman ushered in the original branding back in order to, quote, restore the house to its truth, purity, and essence, end quote. This approach followed the path and concept. In an exclusive interview with Yahoo Style, Eddie Salman stated, it was a radical rupture. He wanted to dress the emerging flower generation, which was his own generation. It was a striking period of ready-to-wear for both women and men. Almost 50 years after, the necessity was for me to transpose this idea, Eve's freedom, this age of innocence. The return to the original name would also help me recreate a legitimate and lost balance between the fashion house and leather accessories. Besides keeping women's and men's fashion side by side, those were the fundamentals I needed to restore together with the progressive allure and message of Reeve Gauche, 
which for me was always the true spirit of Eve and Pierre. The social and historical relevance is necessary. At the birth of the original ready to wear, the thought of luxury clothing for the masses was beyond grasp. Also, high fashion has always been quite stereotypically taken as a pointless indulgence to many. So to make the artistry and understanding of designer-made clothing extensively coveted is a true triumph. Here we have this precedent that high fashion is a part of youth culture. In the same interview, Salman stated, Eve wanted his ready-to-wear to be wearable and laid back. He would often pull from past decades while capturing the era and spirit of a component of the fashion house's success that was disoriented over time. There was besides no difference what Pierre told me when I came back in 2012. Remember, Eve sent a peacoat on his first passage for his first runway, not an evening gown. In such a fast-paced industry, slowing down is an act of rebellion. People tend to want abundance, but there is so much power and beauty to be found, explored further within this, especially in a time where it is often overlooked. There is also this need for an innate understanding of what is truly essential over spectacle, then being able to elevate this outside of what is traditionally taken as stylish or beautiful. Eve had this understanding in Eddie Salmon, much like his rebranding to return to the house's roots, carries this understanding as well and interprets it through his creative vision. Craftsmanship and deliverance within a tribute to the house's original repertoire woven into a modernity that truly resonates with numerous demographics, devoid of trends and branding, or stark embellishments without purpose. For example, the innovation of the permanent collection, consisting of key staple wardrobe pieces and fine close-cut tailoring, explicit proportions, and androgynous flourishes. The collection is an ode to timelessness and stability, meaning it is meant for those who adapt fashion to his or her style not vice versa, often met with the critique of not being groundbreaking. This type of fashion isn't meant for spectacle or shock value. What is groundbreaking here is craftsmanship, because what you see is what you get, and that is every detail is constructed then refined to a very specific type of quality, ultimately producing a garment with authenticity and longevity that is meant to be simple. This is a true luxury collection for living. One of the reasons that, in spite of having a significantly smaller retail network, especially coming into a house of quite low relevance to a leading menswear line, Saint Laurent was able to outperform the overall market for luxury goods. Another example on the other end of the spectrum, for those more interested in the avant-garde, is in the summer of 2015. The designer announced the relaunch of Yves Saint Laurent Couture that had previously departed 10 years prior. Much in the manner of the original Couture, this is not meant for the masses. Hence, the exclusive label was not shown on a fashion week schedule, but rather only to be for friends of the house. The project was titled after the base of the new Couture House in Paris, where the Yves Saint Laurent name, an iconic YSL logo, was utilized and the seasonal collections were highly influential and embraced. Despite public conflicts of interest, much of the house's DNA remains intact through iterations that nod to the classics, such as Le Smoking, Safari, and the look of the Yves Saint Laurent woman being revived for current life. Each collection reflected a nostalgic take on Parisian tones both contemporary and historical, a more alternative LA and underground culture spirit provided this edge and tangibly captures the striking balance with a novelty within each collection for both women and men. This was attained through very grounded grunge, psych rock, bohemian, musical, and west coast coats of dress. The designer in an interview stated, There is no rule, but it is always something current. A documentary idea. 
even when the movements I comment on is partly rooted in history. Yves Saint Laurent invented the idea to play with elements or proportions of decades past in his collections, but in the end it was always about his own time and a creation of its own, the attitude of the moment. This fashion was a reflection of life, a reflection of experience, one that reverberated with many that looked into the past with admiration as well as into the future with desire while remaining rooted in the present. The SLP aesthetic was echoed in numerous market levels, very consistently for men and typically seasonally or as a byproduct of trends for women. For anyone with an interest of fashion even if not personally aligned, this is one of the most sported and distinguishable aesthetics. The attitude is typically quite effortless, the look is seemingly rough around the edges and somewhat undone, while still refined in nature, often approached with a formulaic take. This does allow for a level of accessibility, while maintaining exclusive. Through key pieces, those that truly resonate with this tend to possess the romantics of the look through demeanor, lifestyle, and attitude, which is much more personal and compelling. The ability to wear and style produce an appearance that isn't offered at another fashion house because of the artistry of each garment, though often emulated. It allows for a differing, more unconventional type of beauty and image. Previous to Salman, Stefano Pilati went for a purely elevated and Parisian aesthetic, while Tom Ford decided on an overtly sexy tone. Clothing conveyed these aesthetics, as well as the image direction of communication channels, but the sales conducted during these two periods differed greatly, as they would cater to smaller demographic by which these aligned. While in the press it was embraced, a celebration of celebrity culture, or those who prefer a minimalist, softer, Parisian aesthetic, may find preference in the creative directions of these two designers. The founder is noted to not be fond of the sexier image, especially after Eve's passing. The fashion house experienced hardship in keeping afloat, where YSL would experience stores closing in key US markets. Eddie Salman's image direction would be the one to restore the heart of the heritage and ensure financial stability, which then would allow for the legacy of YSL to live on. Saint Laurent Woman, under Eddie Simon's vision, is one that mirrored the essence of the women the founder himself would design for, one that is not constrained by convention, someone free in spirit with confidence. Original muses of the house were notable for their individuality. Eve famously stated, I create the contemporary woman's wardrobe. Simon on his casting choices stated, This was not in fashion at the time, neither was this attitude and nonchalance, or my arty casting. The casting was coming straight from my photography, bleached androgynous indie girls, the girls I know, the kind of intriguing beauty I understand. It was probably not at the time the idea that audience had of a luxury brand. This casting was a radical shift. The same way he offered this differing image of men at the turn of the 21st century, he gave the same space for women. Though seasonally divided, collections carried unisex offerings. The designer stated looking back at his personal inspiration of rock heroes such as Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, and David Bowie, expressed that this was the origin of everything he designed, a boy or a girl with the same silhouette. Previous to his tenure, the fashion house was not the menswear powerhouse it is today. Simone brought this legacy silhouette that revolutionized becoming widespread during his time at Dior and carried this within the YSL codes of dress, a house with a foundation already rooted in androgyny. On his menswear, he stated, I constantly use my own vocabulary in the sense of repetition of the same signs and semiotic, the permanence of a silhouette or proportions and overall representation. I always believed in repetition, pursuing endlessly the same idea. You cannot own more than one identified style and you need to evolve within the same codes. Eve carried the same tone in his work 
stating, I'm no longer concerned with sensation and innovation, but with the perfection of my style. This image of the Saint Laurent man is the most eminent and captured in fine fabrics, pattern, line, and silhouette to the extent that it did not just become identifiable for this newfound legacy of who the YSL man is, but is widely embraced, coveted, and still sought after, which is evident by its hand in contributing to brand value growth. The rise of the fashion house under his creative vision came to be from all categories of dress. For context, most luxury fashion houses primarily have strong sales in shoes and bags, the most practical investment pieces for purchase. Business of Fashion reported, Eddie has built up the casual product categories and renewed the brand's tailoring offer. Our business with denim, tees, leather, and knitwear accounts for close to a third of the brand sales. Also very prominent are jackets. By the end of his tenure, the revenue of the house would increase more than 20% each year. Their highest operating margin ever reported at a 37.4% fourth quarter revenue increase. During his transformative tenure, the fashion house has become the one that we recognize today, both in terms of aesthetics and offerings, as well as spirit, influence, and impact on the industry. The legacy continues to evolve, and the house's history grows with time, but this era, specifically, stands out as it was the one that pioneered and revived the house's spirit, with a headstrong sensitivity, modernity of an idiosyncratic offering, and a charm that goes against the current. This was the founder's intent and carried on through Eddie Simon's creative work that fulfilled the fashion house's mission to create and market highly desirable products through innovation and unparalleled quality and design. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.